Before you spend money again at Gail's Bakery, just check out the extraordinary timeline of Luke Johnson, RCP, who chairs and co-owns it, the full libertarian right suite, climate denialism, woke hating, anti-lockdown, Tufton Street, promoting madness, high co- hashtag boycott Gales. Now this is a tweet from our old friend, Jolyon Mom. Now Jolyon Mom, you may remember, is part of the Good Law Project. He is a lawyer and he is someone who is also very well known for something else, clubbing a fox to death. It was Boxing Day a few years ago. He was wearing a kimono. He was in his back garden and there was a fox and he clubbed it to death. Now Jolyon Mom, or Joe Mom as he would like to be called, so let's call him Jolyon, is someone who takes the moral high ground on basically every issue. He's tried to traditionally review all sorts of things. Legislation around Brexit, for example, which a democratic majority of people in this country voted for. And now what he's trying to do is tell us all to boycott Gales, which is a bakery. Can I just read out that tweet again, if we put it on screen again? This is what he had put on uh, his Twitter. This is about Luke Johnson, who owns uh, Gales. Before you spend money at Gales again, just check out the extraordinary timeline of Luke Johnson, RCP, who chairs and co-owns Gales Bakery. The full libertarian right suite, climate denialism, woke hating, anti-lockdown Tufton Street, that's the uh, where the Institute for Economic Affairs is, it's the think tank that Jolyon hates, promoting madness. Hashtag boycott Gales. Well, I saw this tweet, it was brought to my attention by a good friend of mine, and I decided what I was going to do was go to Gales and spend some money there. Now, I usually don't because it's very expensive, but for the rest of the show, and I've checked this with Compliance Claire, so Ofcom can't get me, I'm going to be drinking a cup of tea from Gales. Mmm, delicious. And I also have a cinnamon roll from Gales. And I also bought some sardo bread from Gales as well. Now, it's vegan sardo bread, which is probably about the most left-wing purchase I will make in the next between now and Christmas. Gluten-free sardo, baked using gluten-free flours, brown teff, whatever that is, brown rice and chickpea. I probably won't eat this, but Richard Said, Richard Parside might. You can take it away. Do you want to take it away? Oh, with absolutely. You? I will donate that. I will oh, donate that right. to you. Oh, this is I also, I also <laughs> like have a, a cinnamon roll. This is from Gales. So look, Gales is expensive. It's an expensive bakery. But if you really want to annoy the absolute idiot that is Jolyon Mom, I want everybody to go to Gales and buy something and just tell him that he's wrong. So we've got a cinnamon bun here. Sophia, would you like some cinnamon bun? Yeah, that looks you great. You up for it? I'm going to cut some of this. Richard, do you want some cinnamon bun? Will I be cancelled? I don't. Yeah, you won't be cancelled. If you don't want it, you cannot have it. I'm going to have it in front of me and pick at it. Okay, that's all right. We'll have a little bit of cinnamon bun. It's just absolutely ridiculous. So the question we all have to ask ourselves, I'm just cutting this up for people who are listening on the radio. I'm cutting up this rather large cinnamon bun. I'm giving a little bit to Richard and a little bit to Sophia, and I'm going to eat a bit myself. The question you've got to ask yourself is are we going to go with the self-righteous guy who clubs foxes to death whilst wearing a kimono, or are we going to go with a nice man who agrees with most of the things that we agree with? I am anti-woke. Maybe don't agree with them on every other single issue, but certainly Luke Johnson says a lot of things that are quite sensible. So are we going to go with the fox killer, or are we going to go with the person who gives us nice cinnamon buns? I'm going to go with cinnamon bun man. What do you think, Sophia? Well, anyone who gives me a cinnamon bun is going to win the way to my heart. I love cinnamon buns. But I think this is emblematic of a wider problem where you see someone you disagree with and instead of debating with them or taking on their ideas, you just want them to not exist anymore. You want their business to fail. You want people to boycott them. You want to kind of tweet them into non-existence. And I think that is a problem because a lot of the issues we've just been talking about, uh, the impact of the pandemic from cancer perspective, from the impact on the most disadvantaged, et cetera, they have been put into the category of lockdown deniers or COVID deniers or lockdown skeptics. And actually there's so much nuance within that position. And it's really difficult to use and damaging, I think, to use these very punchy terms, which class people in very blunt categories without actually engaging with their I, I ideas. I just want to read you, before I come to Richard, I just want to read out one more response. So Amandine Alexandra, brackets, she, her, replied to uh, replied to Jolyon, not Joe, Jolyon, we've got to call him Jolyon. Thank you for sharing, I had no idea. I've been buying bread from Gales every week for more than three years. Jolyon has replied, happy to send you some sardo starter. Amandine Alexandra, brackets, she, her, has replied, that's kind. Not too worried about the bread, as I've heard about a micro bakery in our area that I've been meaning to try out. However, those croissants and pain au chocolat, some family members are going to miss them, but hopefully they'll understand. What a load of liberal North London tosh. Richard. This is great content. Um, <laughs> this, is a, this is a great cinnamon bun. This is a great um, cinnamon bun. I'm, I am going to try. It does look very nice. Um, 
Look, uh, Charlie and Mon Joe Morn, um, I think that the Good Law Project does an amazing job holding... They never win the, anything. Holding the That's not quite true. Holding the government... Oh, tell me a lot. Let me, tell me a lot case of one. I think... I, I, I actually can't remember right now. He'll but, be back uh, on his phone. Exactly, He'll be back on his exactly, phone. exactly, exactly. Look, uh, even if they don't, even if they don't win things, holding the government to account... Holding the boy calling a bakery? Account, I mean, there are lots of people, well, oh, no, but, you know, well, in a bakery who have jobs. So I think the Good Law Project are wonderful. I think holding the government to account is an incredibly good thing in a democracy. Joe Morn, unfortunately, does quite like being the main character on Twitter. And this kind of thing reflects that. And it really is kind of... It's, but Luke Johnson sounds like he's probably suffering from a kind of moderate form of the same illness, just really wanting the attention what, what on attention Twitter. What attention has he brought upon himself? He's, brought, no, he's on Twitter. He hasn't brought any attention upon himself. I, but I, I think he does, right? He, when he talks well, about... Well, he tweets, I tweet. He, uh, sure, you but tweet? you don't tweet climate denialism stuff. Like, come on, our Surely, kids are thought, so freedom, at risk I thought you agreed to freedom of speech. Oh, no, I don't say he shouldn't say... He doesn't have the right to say it. I'm saying that I think a bit like Joe Morn, he quite likes the attention, and we'd all be better off if people stopped tweeting nonsense. I mean, the government's got quite a lot of money out of Jolly and Mom. I should say, and I want to be very clear about this, from a legal and compliance perspective... <laughs> let me just take another sip of my gills tea. From a legal and compliance perspective, that Jolly and Mom only clubbed one defenceless fox <laughs> to death with a baseball bat whilst wearing a kimono. So it wasn't foxes... It was Fox. 